I played it about five years, five years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> it's nice camera work. Oh. Wow. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Let's go. Okay. Hold it, hold it. You got it, you got it. Yeah. It didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like, whoa. I would say pick up the pace here just because this is like a more ripply section. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that was good. But that being said, Ethan, this is very good. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam and it's time for yet another Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Otomo, Bradley Crowley, Sajun Han, Greg Harris, DP Newberger, and Wendy Tran. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Britton Anderson. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. Thank you so much for checking out my new signature mallets from the last episode. If you haven't seen that video, it's over here. It's been an interesting time in the studio ever since I've gotten that out of the way. I've now been preparing for competition season. I'm not competing obviously because I'm old. <laughs> I'm turning pretty close to 30 at the end of this month actually. July, August and September, this is usually when you see a lot of the competitions coming around like the marimba competitions, percussion competitions, ensemble competitions. And one of them is of course, Marimba Fest, which is the competition that I direct with my team here in Perth, which is available to both in person and online participants around the world. This is another reminder that Marimba Fest registrations end on the 14th of May. You can register now at marimbafest.com forward slash register. Literally, you can be from anywhere around the world and you don't even have to leave your house because we have people from like the United States, from Taiwan, from Japan, Canada, like everybody is joining. This is going to be a really fun party. So go check it out now if you haven't already. Anyway, enough about Marimba Fest. If you haven't already joined my Discord server, it's at adamcapitalcom forward slash Discord. This is where we have a channel called the Let's Watch Feedback section, where we submit videos for feedback from people on the server, but also from me sometimes. So the first video from that channel we're gonna look at today is, Sir Charles was thinking of learning this piece, so just wanted to know your thoughts on his playing of the piece compared to the Spruce video that I made and Erica Daimo. Sorry, English is not my first language. I think your English is great, actually. <laughs> this is a really interesting piece to translate for marimba as you might know so Bailey's spruce is actually a piano piece and it just sounds really pretty and it works out really well if you just read it from the piano score you can literally just transcribe it to laterals it sounds great I played it about five years five years ago five years ago <laughs> well that was ages away five years ago I played this piece in a concert in Perth you can check out the video over here it's not my best performance I definitely can play it a lot better now but it's a really fun thing to play on marimba. It sounds beautiful on a five octave instrument. Yes, Erico Daimo actually came up with the idea of transcribing the spruce onto marimba. There's a very early video of her playing it. And I think that was my inspiration too. I literally just took off the score from IMSLP and just played it. I don't think I've watched this video of Chandler Percussion playing this before. So I'm very interested to see how they interpret it. Let's watch. Okay, here's the video. It says that it's been shot at the Boston Conservatory. I've always heard very good things about Boston Conservatory. It's a very marimba focused school, so I have high expectations. <laughs> but yeah, looking at this opening shot here, we can see we have my favorite brand of marimba, Marimba One. Uh, this is one of the older models. I think it's, yeah, the same generation as my marimba because it's got the old logo and it's the 3100 frame or even 3000 frame. It's, it's the frame with the extra wood on the side. Are very pretty and the mallets that he's using if i just skip ahead are those nancy zoltzman i think yeah nancy zoltzman mallets that would make sense because if you're filming in um, boston conservatory you probably get told to use nancy's mallets <laughs> and yeah i think he's using a traditional grip which is something that i absolutely suck at <laughs> i'm terrible at traditional grip but it looks great to me and there's also a music stand there this is always something i find interesting because me personally i always play without music but some people actually play really really nice with a music stand uh, nancy zeltzman of course she's very well known for doing this uh, one of nancy's former students wei chen lin he also does this as well and he plays is amazing so yeah this this is gonna be really good I'm really excited let's go all right we got the slow start it's nice camera work 
Oh. Wow. Oh. Oh, that's beautiful voicing. That's exactly how I would do it as well. Yeah, it's very similar to how I played it. Nice. I love that it's not rushing at all. Because, you know, a spruce is like a really beautiful thing and it should not be rushed. Oh, that top voice. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> wow, this is like art. This part is hard. Ah, oh, you transpose the bass note up. I used all the low bass notes. Oh! Yeah, I like that the tempo is moving along as well. Nice! This delayed second beat is so good. And the voicing is very clear. I would say pick up the pace here, just because this is like a more ripply section. Oh, here it is, here it is. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> that was good. I would say, yeah, don't... S I wouldn't personally... See how he's like kind of like slowing it down each phrase? I'd say just go through it all the way. Oh, that D. A bit heavy on the downstroke. I'd probably lift it up a little bit more. Boom. Boom. Nice. I'd say the left hand, yeah, definitely can lift off a little bit more. I believe it sounds very aggressive. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Dun, dun, boom, boom, boom. Oh! <laughs> Gorgeous. Your A theme playing is so good. I think this is a little bit too slow for the ending. Yeah! Excellent. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, honestly, that is very clean playing. The tone is beautiful. The recording technique used in this video is... Honestly, it makes the piece sound even better. Like, I want to learn how to record like that clear. I've never tried miking my marimba that close before. Maybe I should, like, literally put it right in its face. But yeah, most importantly, what I would say Chandler is doing really well in this video is the lightness overall. It's very light and gentle, and the tempo at the beginning is nice and slow, nice and drawn out. As I was saying before, the faster section is probably best to, like, just keep it moving, because if you don't, it kind of sounds like there's no direction and because it's so cyclical cycles in nature generally mean that it's very repetitive and it can turn to something that sounds very mechanical and predictable so i think altering it by either like pushing it through because we've already had a lot of slowing down in the first section and of course the last section which is the same theme but the middle section definitely i reckon push it through i think erico does that and i also try to do that yeah what a beautiful sound <laughs> this is like piano music and I think Sibelius just transcribes beautifully onto the marimba because it's so porous. Is that, is that a way to say it? Porous? But yeah, to answer your question, Charles, I think his playing is pretty good. Uh, definitely, it's just like some small phrasing things, but in terms of the accuracy, the tone, uh, the voicing, and the whole video setup, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this performance. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, the next piece is actually, well... <laughs> It's my piece. Apex Nestle 5225. Hey guys, so this is essentially my final product of my interpretation of Adam's solo, Hope. And I had the pleasure of performing at my church's traditional services earlier today. I think I've watched videos of Ethan playing this before, um, just like in practice. I think that was earlier on in the feedback. This is my first solo I've ever performed and actually learned and loved it so much. Oh. 
Thank you. Especially the last 30-ish seconds as the main melody breaks down into a more broken version of the original. I've loved working with this in the last six months and I'm really excited to keep perusing my love of music in life. Yes, I think you should always just keep pushing on. If you enjoy playing music, why not just make it your life? Like honestly, I think sometimes we stigmatize that too much with the idea of careers and stuff. So please don't give up, okay? <laughs> Edit, yes, I know there were a few mistakes. So this is also my first time ever performing for a crowd. That's totally fine, you know, like good on you for wanting to put this up for feedback and for wanting to see what people think of it, including me. <laughs> and yeah, also fun fact, the Let's Watch series actually started three years ago as me reacting to people playing my pieces. So <laughs> we've come a really long way since then and it's really crazy to just see my music appear on like YouTube search results and stuff. Let's watch. Okay, so here we are in the church service and we can see Ethan is standing behind the Muslim marimba that is four and a third. It, correct me if I'm wrong, Ethan, this looks like the same marimba that you played in in the earlier videos that you sent. Three microphones there. That's a lot of miking for, for a marimba. Normally we just make do with two, especially a smaller one. And we have a Vic Firth mallet back hanging over the side. So I think this is like a marching style marimba. But honestly, synthetic marimbas sound so nice in big acoustic spaces like churches and stuff. Marimba One is actually releasing a synthetic keyboard. They just came out with the info maybe like a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh, I can't tell what those are. Um, they're white headed, but I can't tell at all. Um, Ethan, let me know down in the comments below what Melis is. I'm really interested. All right, I'm really excited to hear this. Uh, let's go. Let's go, Ethan. Let's go. Ooh, nice. Look at those lifts. Man, what grip is that? Is that burden grip? Nice, nice pacing on the start. That's good. It's not too drawn out, but not too slow either. Ooh. Oh, you almost hit the E. Yeah, totally fine to take your time on that. You don't need to rush into it. It's all good. Oh, it sounds so good in this room. It's good voicing. Nice and floaty. Uh-huh. Okay, we've kind of sped up a little bit, but that's fine. Voicing's great, dynamics great. Nice, we got it. That D is very sharp. <laughs> not not your fault, it's the marimba, but yeah. You're making it sound really nice. Nice! Listen to that ripple chord. Oh, I'm so proud, this is great. Okay, yep, keep it steady. You got it, you got it. Slight shaft click, but that's okay. Good space, good space. I can see there's a little bit of nerves, but that's totally fine. Totally understandable. I'd be the same too. Yep. Nice, okay. Probably can have a little bit more bass notes. Yeah, we need to get that D sharp in the left hand, but that's okay. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, the voicing is still really good. I can hear the top voice so clearly, which is great. Do do do. Wow, that was an interesting. Okay. Good, good recovery, and here we go. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Let's go. Okay, hold it, hold it. You got it, you got it. Yeah, nice. Oh, that was nice. I like that slight slowdown. That's a good touch. Oh, this is good. Look at this. Nice. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, that chord was so close. But yeah, could have probably taken a bit more time between that chord and the next part. This part too, you can probably take even more time. Even more than that.
Oh, that's nice. Sounds so good on synthetic. And then roll. Oh. And that's a really good ending. Well done. That's such a good ending. Honestly, I think you could have just held the last note just a little bit longer, like hold it up and then let the bars ring fully before you break it. I think this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. It's like, all right, we finished and we stop and then we bow and it's all done. <laughs> but actually, if you just hold it and you use the bar ring as a guide to stop your hand, so it's like, Dum! and then you stop, then you're actually simulating the sustain from the bus and you're actually visually illustrating it and it, it actually plays with the audience's perception of the sound. They're like, whoa, it's still ringing. And they won't clap. They'll be like, <laughs> and then it just keeps going. And then you stop and then everyone will be like, whoa. And they will just like, all that information just gets digested into their brain and you have yourself like a killer performance. But that being said, Ethan, this is very good. <laughs> But yeah, I'll start off by opening it to the floor. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Ethan's performance. Uh, I think it was really good, but I would love to hear your thoughts first. Okay, I'll start off with the things that are really good. Uh, the tempo, it's literally like very steady. There was like a little bit here and there where it sped up a little bit, but like no crazy rushing. If you watch the beginning and the end of the video, the tempo is not that far off. pretty much the same, very steady and sitting back, which is great because hope is not a competition. It's definitely not like a sprint. You're not supposed to go. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the second thing that I really liked about Ethan's playing was the voicing. I can really hear the top voice and the correct voices and accompaniment voices stacked underneath it. Like it's all in the right order and it's very clear, which is fantastic. I have heard versions of hope where I can hear all of the complimentary notes like much louder than the top voice. We wanna try and avoid that. That's kind of the reason why I wrote this piece like this is so that you can train your voicing and Ethan has absolutely smashed it. And remember, this is Ethan's first performance. So Ethan exploring the lifts at the beginning, fantastic. Like exploring all those kinds of air gestures and things like that. It's very difficult for people who have never played before, but Ethan kind of just did it very naturally and it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like, Whoa, like you know how some people overly choreograph those moves? Ethan's felt very good. Now for the things that I think Ethan could definitely have a look at if he was wanting to take this even further, I'd say firstly, of course, the note accuracy, there's a couple of notes that haven't been learned correctly. And I think the way to avoid this is to always learn in smaller chunks. When you do the B major chord. Uh, it needs to be a D sharp. <laughs> C sharp is like really obvious that it's not the right chord. Things like that definitely need to change them. Sometimes if you have like a wrong note because of like nerves or something, like a split note here and there, that's totally fine. But I think when it's just been learned maybe the wrong way or like memorized the wrong way, it's really hard to reverse. The second thing I might say is I can see on the stage, it doesn't look like there's a lot of room behind the marimba. And it seems like you're standing a little bit close to the marimba and also kind of above the marimba. So maybe if you were to get just a little bit more space between you and the marimba and then also adopt a more grounded stance. I always think a grounded stance is better than a standing stance just because when you're standing straight up with your legs fully extended and your body's fully extended and you play, it's very hard to get any sort of weight. Maybe adopt a bit more of a energized stance, like bend the knees slightly and don't be afraid to get a bit lower. And the only other thing I would say is embrace silences and embrace larger slowdowns. So unlike the Spruce video that we just watched, I think Ethan's slowdowns were not enough. <laughs> there was times where he would do the Ritz, like for example, at the very end, that If you look at my score for that, you'll see there's some apostrophes there. That's for you to leave a bigger space. Definitely can slow those bits down a bit more. Otherwise, the whole thing sounds very constant. So again, it's like the opposite to the Spruce video we watched in the sense that the Spruce video 
had a lot of really nice spacious moments but when it came to the constant moments there weren't really as many of those but yeah Ethan honestly for your first time performing in front of a live audience this is fantastic and I'm really just like splitting hairs at this point so I would really love to see you at Marimba Fest personally <laughs> I'd love to see you perform something like this at our festival online like that would be so cool but more importantly yeah I'm just really excited to see my piece being played in such a beautiful way so thank you for doing that and once again let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Ethan's performance and if you enjoyed today's video please give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see your video on the channel featured for feedback or for any other reason you can always submit it to the discord at adamtabbycoffin.com forward slash discord also for everyone who's been asking me about my signature mallets uh, don't worry they're going to be coming soon make sure you check out my video on my signature mallets they're going to be coming literally around july to august to all major retailers in the u.s first so anyone who lives in the u.s is very lucky thank you so much for watching today's video and i'll see you next week for another episode of the studio good night